Hey guys, welcome back to Henry Sandhill Tutoring, and today an introduction to Linux control groups. Have you ever wanted to learn how to isolate applications to specific cores in your system? Do you want to be able to run software that needs real-time performance on a loaded host while minimizing the chances of compromising its ability to execute reliably? Today I'll show you how to do all of this using simple shell commands and scripting. Linux control groups have been around for a while now. They allow you to define various rules to restrict processes to certain devices, memory, and CPU resources, among other things. One powerful feature, of course, is the ability to isolate a CPU core or set of cores for use by a select application. This is something that I use to guarantee my desktop video captures never drop a frame, for instance, and don't fall out of audio synchronization as I record them. Let's check out how this all works. So, right now, I'm running an FFmpeg capture for my desktop. This is basically capturing what you see in the video, as well as the audio source. And this is occupying core number 8 here, my HTOP output. As well as, I'm also capturing my webcam to the screen. This is running on core 7. So both of these are isolated to their own core. Now, there will be other little system-level app applications that run, like kernel worker processes and what have you, that will sometimes take up a bit, a bit of resources here and there. But that's, that's okay, and that doesn't usually impact things. We still will get good performance for the most part, as long as we don't totally max everything out. So let's have a look at what we can do. We're going to run a little test here with the CPU stress tester application. We'll just start this up now, and we should see it's going to consume resources over here in these cores, which is not ideal. We want to maybe move this application and run it on cores 5 and 6. And you'll note that as I'm doing this, this is all fine and dandy, and our, our, our speed here for our video is still floating around one time, which means it's, it's real time, basically, and our FPS is stable. There's been no drops, and this should remain the same throughout the course of this video, which is why I'm leaving it up there. So we'll stop that. We'll go back to our console. Now, let's do a little check here. We'll grab all of the Firefox process ID information we need by filtering out the first column from a PSAX grep Firefox, and we're going to pass this using xargs to a script that I've written, which is going to reassign this into cores 5 and 6 for us, into a group there. And when we run this, we'll see it'll find its lovely output. We have our different processes that are being reassigned, their CPU affinity. And if we go over now to our Firefox app again, we run the same stress test, we're going to see that the two cores here will get consumed, and these all stay relatively the same, as well as our cores that we're using for the webcam capture and for our video capture. So that's perfect. Now what happens maybe if we want to do the same thing, sort of, but we want to use one of these four CPUs in this group? We may have an application that supports multi-threading by default, and if we run it, it will consume all four of them on us. But we don't want that. So let's have a look here. If we have this, this is now actually in Chrome. If we run a similar stress test here, we'll note it's going to hammer these cores for us, which we don't want. And so we will you know, stop that quickly here. And we'll go back over. Again, notice no drop still. Video is still stable. We'll go back over to our command prompt, and we will instead, oh, sorry, we will instead search for Chromium, and we will grab the process IDs that are associated to that, and this time we're actually going to wrap this up in a loop for i in our process values do task set dash C for core value and P for process ID, dollar sign I, and done. And actually, sorry, we need to actually specify what core. So task set is, the is one of the commands you can use to associate a different process to a specific CPU. So what we need to do is tell it what core we want it to go to. But keep in mind that task set counts CPU cores starting at zero and not one. So we'll be putting two here to make our application end up on core three in the HTOP usage output down below. Just so you're aware of that, there is a slight discrepancy between those two things. 
And now we will see it will change for us the CPU uh, affinity for our fire, or, sorry for our Chrome processes. So originally it stated that we were on zero to three, and now we're on processor number two. Above here, we see it stated to us that it was already on four and five, and it moved it to four and five. That sort of I mean it's been um, obfuscated a bit by the C group script, which we'll get into a bit later, just in case you picked up on that. So we'll go back over to Chrome and we'll rerun our stress test. And now we should see it's focusing all its utilization on core number three, which is precisely what we wanted. So we'll stop that. Let's just have a look here now. We'll go back over to uh, our console. So this is just to give you an idea, the C group commands, uh, I guess, arguments that it can accept. So what I've done in my case is I, I have eight cores and I made um, I have seven different groups. I could probably make a couple more if I really wanted to. Uh, so I can have some choice as to what grouping I want to assign a process to. Now just because I assign a process, for instance, to group six and seven, doesn't mean I have to make it use both of the cores in that group. As you can see with uh, my I guess, webcam video capture and the desktop video capture, I have selected to put individual applications onto one core, which is sort of what we saw as well when we looked at the reassignment there for Chrome. So there's also other options here, like to reset all the processes, to use all the cores and undo things. We can pass a dash Z flag with no arguments. And then we, if we need to initialize our environment, if we just booted the system up and the CPU set groups don't exist, we can just do dash I, it'll create all the groups for us. And of course, dash, dash H shows the help. Let's have a look at what this is actually doing then. Now, I'll make a copy of this available on my GitHub page, so you guys can go there and grab it if you want. Do, as, do, do, with, it, do with it as you will. So if we have a look here, we can see one note is that this stuff does require some additional packages present on your system uh, to enable the commands like cgcreate, as we can see here, and a different command called cgclassify, which we'll see a little further down. So you may want to look out for the C group dash tools and the lib C group one packages and make sure you install those on your system. And of course, check your mounts. So if we go over here and we do a uh, mount grep uh, C group, this is what you should see more or less. You should see all these different C group mount points as type C group or even C group two. And uh, these are special file systems that are going to allow you to do what we're doing here. In fact, if we do an ls inside here, you'll see all these different files. Of course, the uh, most important one is the tasks file, as that's what associates a process to a specific group. So if I was to look at, uh, say, CPU 67, 6 and 7 group and the tasks file, we'll see the PIDs that are associated to my webcam processes and my FFmpeg processes. And of course, that's how it allows these to be assigned to these cores. So let's have a look here. There's the CG create command. This is creating the different core, or the different CPU set groups. Dash A specifies the overall owner for the group, and dash T specifies a specific user that can write to the tasks file. In this case, I'm grabbing my user ID as the sudo user variable and passing that in here, and then I'm defining these different CPU uh, set group names. Next, I'm I'm actually populating the CPU set.cpu's file. This is just containing an integer range that shows what CPU cores are to be used for that group. In the following section, I'm populating a zero into the CPU set.mems file. You need to do this to make sure things will work correctly, otherwise you won't be able to assign uh, processes into your tasks file. It will prevent you from doing so. This just basically says use all available memory for any process that's in this group. In a future video, I will show how you can uh, do a similar partitioning of your memory as we're doing here with our CPU cores. There's a little root check function that basically says, hey, if you're not root, it yells at you and kicks you out. Then, of course, there's the main part. I guess part of the script here. This is the setProc function. What this does is it will process any process IDs passed to it. 
if you provide all as the process ID, it will think you mean all processes in your system, and it will react as such and basically uh, remap all process IDs to um, whatever group you're selecting. If you pass individual process IDs, however, it's going to uh, set those individual processes to the group that you chose. And it does so by uh, assigning the value for the CPU set variable and the task set variable as well, which, to, which is to define like, uh, what, what, what cores basically you want to use. So we're using the CG classify command here to do this. That reclassifies your process ID into that particular group and then task set ensures that it makes it there. I have noticed that on some occasions when I just use CG classify, things didn't get moved over fully. So because of that, I've added this task set command, which doesn't hurt anything. It just produces an additional piece of output and uh, ensures, it seems, that things will work smoothly. Then we have show usage. That's just the usage output, of course, from before, and the main section, the while loop, that handles the, uh, I guess, getOps function, which gets all the different options that could be passed, and then calls the appropriate function. If you're initializing the I guess, uh, environment, of course, it will run root check and then CPU set vals functions, and if you're just looking at the usage, of course, it just does show usage. And if you're doing an individual or group of processes or all processes to be set to a certain CPU set group, then one of these uh, little things will fire off here, assigning the opdarg information to the process variable, CPU set uh, to whatever value is appropriate for that selection, as well as task set, and then it calls the set proc function. The very end here is just like a reset option that basically puts everything back to normal and puts all your processes back into uh, all eight cores and uh, makes sure things are back to the way they were prior to you doing this. So, um, let's see here. We talked about the fact that you need to have those uh, two packages the C group tools package and the lib C group package is present in order to utilize the CG create and CG classify commands. And uh, that's about it, really. This is sort of how you can effectively partition off your cores and protect your system from uh, in a, a certain application being bogged down by other applications or from a certain application consuming all your resources. So uh, with that, um, I just want to take the time to thank you for watching this, and if you enjoyed the content here, please be sure to like, subscribe, and hit that little bell uh, so you can see more of my content in the future. And if you have any questions or feedback, uh, please leave them below, and I'll gladly get back to you as soon as I can. Take care, and I'll see you in the next one.